a uh, quick little lesson here. Um, go back over the product tool. I gave you all this last Wednesday, Friday-ish, sometime before you all have seen this. Uh, if you have a product, if y is f times g, then the derivative of the function, you have to add it. It's the derivative of your first function times the second plus first derivative of second. And you could actually flip that around if you wanted to do this part right here first and then plus, and then do this part second, that's fine. You can do that because it's addition. Um, but I generally do the first one first, so that really matters. But here's a couple of examples where we'll do the product tool. I think we did a prob problem like this the other day. But if your function is e to the x times all of that, then I treat that like my first function, and then my second function will be this one. So I'll start by doing the derivative of e to the x, which that's just e to the x. Keep my second function alone x squared plus 5x minus 1, and then I will add to that. <coughs> Keep my first function the same this time, because I did the derivative of e to the x first time. Now I'll do the derivative of the red stuff. That would be 2x plus 5. And there's your derivative. Stop right there, put a box around it, smile, chest bump your neighbor, and move on to the next problem. Um, so that's your product rule. Derivative first times second plus first derivative second. Um, here's another problem. Um, now, this one's kind of an interesting one because you have the option, if you really wanted, you could expand all of this out. Do x cubed times x to the fourth, x cubed times 5x squared, x cubed times x, x cubed times negative 17, and then distribute all the way through the whole thing. That's kind of a pain. I tried to pick one that was a little bit ugly that you wouldn't be tempted to do that. If you really want to, you could expand this and do power rule, but just for the sake of practice, we'll do the product rule. So dy dx, the derivative. Will be. This is my first function. There's my second one. I'm going to start with the derivative of my first, for x squared plus 3, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So there's the first term times my second, x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus x minus 17. Plus, now my first term, x cubed plus 3x plus 1 times the derivative of my second term, which would be 4x cubed minus 10x plus 1. There's your derivative. Draw a triangle man. Be happy. We can draw a triangle man. We could even take triangle man and roam around. All right. Whew. Okay, uh, more derivatives. Find the derivative. So that was product rule the first two times. We're still working product rule, and I've shown this to you before, so I'm going through these a little bit quickly. Just a couple of examples. Just remember, you do the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's what I did right here. I didn't use the cute colors, but same thing. Okay, now this one's interesting because here we actually have three terms that we're multiplying. It's still a product rule. It's just a little bit of a hairier product rule. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways we can do this. Keep an eye on the time. we are we three minutes? Um, the first way, and this is probably the way the book will show you. I really can't remember how the book does it, but they would recommend, I'm guessing, is to group your first two terms, and we'll treat that like one term. Then I will group my last set, and that is my second term. So when I'm looking at this and I'm doing the product rule, this is the first term, this is my second term. So I'm going to follow the product rule with those two terms. The thing is, when I do the derivative, y prime, my first term itself is a product. So in order to get the derivative of my first term, I actually have to do the product rule here. So the derivative of my first term is going to be, okay, now product rule, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x times my second term, which is 5 to the x, plus, now I'll do e to the x. I'm not going to do the derivative of it. So e to the x, and then the derivative of 5 to the x is 5 to the x times the natural log of 5. Okay, all of that, get my parentheses right, I think I need one more set of brackets. All of that is the derivative of my first term. It's, it by itself is a product rule. And now, so I've done the derivative of my first times my second, which is x squared plus 3x. Now to continue my big product rule, my big product rule, now I go back. My first term, I've already done the derivative of the blue, so that's going to be e to the x times 5 to the x. And now I'll do the derivative of the second term, which is x squared, nope, that's not it. Let's try this again. Which is 2x plus 3. 
So that's how you can do the product rule if you have more than two terms. Um, <clears throat> you have a first term and a second term of the big problem, then in the first term, now we have another first and second term, or we do the product rule within the product rule. Um, another way you can do the product rule for this one, let me copy that, I should have done this already. Copy. Another way we could have done that product rule is to paste. Um, <clears throat> we could actually follow the pattern that we did have. Uh, my first, my basic product rule is if y is equal to f times g, then y prime is, okay, you'll do the derivative of the first times the second plus first times the derivative of the second. That's your basic product rule. Now, here we actually have three terms, so we could think of this as like an f times a g times an h, and if I kept following the pattern, what we'll do is we'll just do the derivative of one function at a time, and we'll actually do it three times. So what I could do here for my product rule is dy dx. I could do basically a three-term product rule. The derivative of my first function is e to the x, and then I will leave my other two functions alone. 5 to the x, x squared plus 3x. Now, I've already done the derivative of f. Now it's time to do the derivative of g. So f stays the same. Now I'll do the derivative of g is 5 to the x, ln 5, and then h, which is x squared plus 3x. Boy, my writing is atrocious. Now I've done the derivative of f and g. Now I've got to do h, so plus, I'll keep my first two the same this time, e to the x times 5 to the x times, and the derivative of h is going to be 2x plus 3. That also works for the product rule. You can do it either way. So this one is the same derivative as this one. Uh, and if you wanted, you could distribute all of this out. If you multiply this one out, it will turn out to be the same as this problem. So two different ways you can do product rule if you have three terms. First one is to group it and uh, do product rule within product rule. Or we could do my product rule just carried out with three terms. F, the, the derivative of F times GH plus F, G prime H plus F, G, H prime. I said that kind of fast. All right. Moving on. Um, so that's product rule. That's product rule. If we have a product rule, we probably have a... Ah, and there I go, jumping ahead of myself. Ah, I forgot about second derivatives. So, and I'm too lazy to go back and start recording over again. Second derivatives. <laughs> yeah. Um, second derivatives. Well, second derivatives, you've got to do the first derivative first. So y prime is... And this one, honestly, if I were doing this... I would expand this. This is not too tough. That's just two binomials. Foil that out, and you get a, a nice polynomial. Uh, but just for the sake of practicing the product rule, I'm going to do this with product rule. The derivative of x squared plus 5x is not x squared plus 5x. And I'm off my game. It is 2x plus 5 times 4x cubed plus 7. Plus, so I just did the derivative of the first times the second, plus my first term, which is x squared plus 5x, times the derivative of my second term, which is 12x squared. So there's my first derivative. Now when I do my second derivative, and this is going to take a lot of space, but now I've got two product rules. So when I do my derivative, I'll do the derivative of this product with a product rule. So I'll do, let's see. This is a product, so my first term is 2x plus 5. The derivative of that is 2 times, and I'll keep my second term the same, 4x cubed plus 7, plus my first term, which is 2x plus 5, times the derivative of my second, which will be 12x cubed squared. Oh, what in the world was that? I'm making up my own numbers. Okay, 12x squared. Um, there is a derivative of my first term. Second term, plus... Now I've got to do the derivative of this product. So I have another product rule over here. So I'll do the derivative of x squared plus 5x. That's 2x plus 5 times my second term, 12x squared, plus my first term, x squared plus 5x, times the derivative of my second term, derivative of 12x squared is 24x. And there is your second derivative. Uh, honestly, this would have been easier if we just multiplied the first one out x squared and just distribute all of that and then do power rule twice. But I just want to do this for the sake of doing the product rule. Uh, let's see, I think there's another second derivative. <laughs> there it is. Uh, uh, second derivative with this one, second derivative of this one, y prime. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x 
and I'll keep my second function the same to execute plus x plus the derivative of e to the i just did that. Now I keep my first function the same, e to the x, times the derivative of 2x cubed plus x is 6x squared plus 1. And now it's time to do the second derivative. And I could do this one. I could do this one the same way I just did this problem. I could do that. But I'm always thinking of ways I can make this a little bit easier. And I'm looking at these two, this whole thing. And what I could do to make this easier, instead of doing the product rule twice for my second derivative, what I'm doing is I'm looking at this and I notice that I have an e to the x in both of these terms. I can actually factor out that e to the x. And if I factor out that e to the x, that leaves me with 2x cubed plus x. I pulled that e to the x out plus 6x squared plus 1. And now when it's time to do my second derivative, I only have one product tool. So always keep an eye out for things you can do to make the calculus a little bit easier. Second derivative now is just a single product rule. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. I'll keep the parentheses the same. Ah, bell's ringing. That's funny. Sit back down. You can't leave yet. Okay. Um, so e to the x times all that. I just did the derivative of e to the x. Now I'll keep e to the x the same, and I'll do the derivative of the parentheses. So that'd be 6x squared plus 1 plus 12x. Close parentheses, and there's my second derivative. That's a lot easier than having to do the product rule twice with the way um, this was originally written in my first derivative. So always be on the lookout for ways that you can make the calculus easier by doing a little bit of algebra. Um, and x will do the quotient rule. And quotient rule is for cases where your function is written as f of x divided by g of x, which you probably could have guessed that's a quotient you're dividing. The derivative, this one's really ugly. This one's pretty ugly. Um, here, let's look at it like this. I'm going to try to isolate, get rid of that stuff down there. Uh, oh, way too much. Ah, oh, jeez. Now you can't see the beginning of it. What the... Uh, all right, that was a bad idea. Go away. All right, let's try it this way then. Let's do let's do the oval thing. Hey, that's a little better. All right. Um, okay, if your function is f of x divided by g of x, your derivative. Here's how it works. You do the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus top function derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. It's the ugliest of the derivative shortcuts. Still better than limits, though. Um, now, a little saying that we're going to use to try to remember this is what's down here. Uh, let me get all this so we can only look at that. Okay. Uh, another way to think of it is instead of top function over bottom function, we'll think of it as high over low. I misspelled high there. Oh, well. So the, the derivative of high over low, the way it is, is it's low, the low function, times, and d high means derivative of the high minus, then your high function, times d low, the derivative of the low, over low times low, or low squared. So uh, when we say that, it's low d high minus high d low over low low, which is fun to say. We're going to dance to that probably. You may already be dancing. I don't know. But low d high minus high d low over low low. Um, so that's how we're going to do the derivative of a quotient. So uh, low d high minus high d low over low low. And let's try it. So here we have a function, f of x is x squared plus 3. Oh, you can read it. Why am I reading to you? All right, f prime of x. f prime of x. We have a low function, and we have a high function. I'll color code this once, this first time. So I'll do my low. Whenever I do something with my low, it's in red. Whenever I do my top function, I'll do it in blue. So my low function, it's low d high. So I keep my low the same, 4x cubed plus 5x squared times d high, which means derivative high. Derivative of the top is 2x. So low d high minus high d low. So now I'll keep my high the same, x squared plus 3. My top function stays the same, and it's d low. So d low, derivative of low, is 12x squared plus 10x. 
So that is the numerator. That's all just the numerator. Lo di ha minus ha di lo over lo lo. And now I've got to do the over lo lo, which would be my bottom function squared. I'll just put that in parentheses. 4x cubed plus 5x squared, all squared. That is your quotient rule. We'll leave it like that. There's really no benefit to cleaning that up. Eventually, we'll do things with the derivatives, but for now, as long as we're just finding derivatives, we'll stop right here. If you have to use this answer for something, then it may be beneficial to expand the numerator and combine your like terms and, and see what all cleans up. But for now, we'll just leave it like this. That is your quotient rule. Let's see what we have here. Here's another quotient rule. 2, two to the x over all that stuff. My derivative is going to be my low function. It's low d ha, so I'll do my low function first. 1 minus x cubed. d ha means the derivative of the top. d ha is 2 to the x times ln 2. <laughs> so low d ha minus my ha function, which is just 2 to the x. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that in parentheses. Parentheses is the big error people make on this. Just go ahead and put everything in parentheses that you can. So that's high. D low is going to be the derivative of 1 is 0. Negative x cubed is going to be negative 3x squared. So that's the derivative of the bottom all over. The bottom squared is going to be 1 minus x cubed all squared. So low D high minus high D low over low low. There's your derivative. I think that's the last. No, one more. Is that the last one? Yeah, this is the last one. All right. So the derivative of this one, um, okay, we can do quotient rule. My low function, x squared, and I like to put everything in parentheses I can. So my bottom times my top function derivative. Derivative? Is that a word? I don't know. So low d high is going to be d high is 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 minus high x cubed, pick up, minus 2x squared plus x. d low is going to just be 2x all over my bottom squared. x squared squared. And we'll stop there. Low d high minus high d low over low low. Now hopefully some of you are already thinking, I've told you all before, that if you can, try to clean up your functions, see what you can do to make derivatives a little bit easier, and maybe some of y'all notice this, but this problem is a prime example for an STD. So we have an STD here. <laughs> what is the sub doing right now? <laughs> STDs. Anyway. All right. Uh, geez, why does it group it like this? I'm going to give some room to work with my STDs. Okay, we could STD this thing, single term denominator, STD, and clean this up to where we can just do power rules. So x cubed over x squared, split this thing up, x cubed over x squared, minus... 2x squared over x squared plus x over x squared. And when we clean that up, x cubed over x squared is x. 2x squared over x squared, the, two, the x squareds cancel. And x over x squared is going to be 1 over x, but in order to do the derivative, I need to write that as x to the negative 1, so I can use power rule. And now my derivative is just going to be the derivative of x is 1, the derivative of negative 2, that's just a constant. That's 0. Now the derivative of x to the negative 1, bring down the negative 1, x, and subtract 1. So that's your derivative. Okay, yeah. And if we felt studious and you wanted to do a bunch of algebra and cleaning up to this top derivative, these two things are the same. These two things are the same. This one is just a little bit cleaner. Well, a lot bit cleaner. A big bit cleaner. The opposite of little is big, so the opposite of a little bit is a big bit. So this is big bit cleaner. Um, so there we go. That is your quotient rule. And um, this will be this will stay on YouTube. So if you need to go back and see it again, I did this kind of fast. You may not have been able to keep up. Uh, you can just go home or go to the library or something and check this out. And it will be up forever. The end.